What's up guys, my name is Liam and today we're going to be taking a look at the Wiseal OGM Cloud. This is basically a clone of the Sensei and I've been really looking forward to getting my hands on this. But is this going to be the perfect gaming mouse for you? Let's check it out. And before we get started, I want to let you know that this was sent out to me, but everything you're going to be hearing in this video is going to be my own words and my own opinions. Included inside the box, it does come with these grips, a set of the larger style skates, a user manual. This is the 1K receiver with the dongle adapter. It also includes a USB-C cable and then obviously the mouse. And if you do go with the 4K receiver, here's what the actual receiver itself looks like. Nice and flat, has a rubberized bottom and it has an LED indicator around the outside of the bottom as well. And here we have the OGM Cloud. I really love this red and white colorway. I really think it stands out and it pops. Then coming over to the bottom, right here on the right side, you do have the power button. So you will have to hold this down for a couple of seconds to power on the mouse. You can adjust the DPI with this button. And then over here on this side is where you can actually adjust the polling rate if you do have the 4K receiver hooked up. And just to let you guys know the yellow colorway does actually mean that you're getting the 4K polling rate. But just to let you guys know, this does have software for it. We'll go over that shortly. I would recommend downloading the software. That way you can adjust the bounce setting time as well. And I really love what Wiseau did here with the skate design going with the bigger option skate. So as you can see, it does come with these smaller skates installed and they did feel really good. They had a really smooth glide overall and they feel really quick. I do feel like the design of this was done really well. When it comes to the surface, they're using a coating on here. It feels great. Incredible out of the box, incredibly sticky. And this is using a thicker style plastic. It feels like if you you were to push really hard on it you can get some bend and activate the side buttons on there but as i was using one hand using it in game i was trying to give it the death grip and i couldn't get any movement out of it just with using it normally for mouse one and two they went with the huano blue shell pink dots and they feel really good all around there is very minimal pre-travel here you get a nice click the buttons on this since this is kind of a bigger style mouse it does kind of sound like it has a little bit more of a hollow sound to it but aside from that, the button implementation on here, it feels really good, really solid all around. It does get a little heavier towards the back. And I do feel like these clicks feel just slightly a little bit heavier than other Huano Blue Shell Pink Dot implementations. But overall lightweight, very clickable and spammable. I'm not getting any bad play left to right or any type of teetering on the switch. There's one thing I do want to mention about these buttons that I did notice though, however, is as you can see here, it does kind of have this front lip. So I didn't have a problem with it personally because I do have smaller style hands and when I was gripping the mouse, I was mostly playing with it like this. But if you were to have longer fingers, larger hands, if you do compress the switch, the way that this is designed, you do kind of feel a little bit of this lip up here in the front. So that is something I did want to bring to your guys' attention, but again, for me, it was not an issue. The scroll wheel has also felt great. It is nearly identical to the same location and size of the Sensei as well. It does have a rubberized center wheel. So nice and grippy. It does have lightly defined steps, but the center scroll wheel click does feel nice. Easy to spam, not too light, not too heavy, kind of a good spot right there in the middle. The side buttons on this, they also feel really good to me. They do feel a little different than the other types of side buttons out there. Normally they're a little sharp sharper and a little bit lighter. These feel a little bit more clunky to me, but I just feel like it just kind of goes in with the style of the mouse. But in the overall implementation, it is really good. There is a very minimal pre-travel on both the front and the rear button. If I were to start pushing here from the back, you get just a little bit of play, but nothing too bad. Nothing that I noticed while I was using it. But the one thing about this is the pre-travel is really good, but the post-travel, if you were to be really rough on these and push in, you can't actually push the rear side button into the shell quite a bit. But aside from that, there's not a whole lot of rocking if you were to go back and forth on them. So they have really good stability. And let me just throw these up to the mic here really quick. See if you can hear what I'm talking about to some of the other competition that's out there. See how they feel just a little bit like sharper and snappier. So overall with the feeling of this in hand as I was using it in game, it felt great. So let's go ahead and drop the click and the build quality sound check.
This does come with a 300 milliamp hour battery inside. So with the 4K performance, you're gonna get around 20 hours of use. And with the smaller skates installed as it comes out of the box, looks like we got it coming in at approximately 57.1 grams. And when it comes to the balance, it really feels perfect front to back and even left to right. It uses a similar type of software that we've seen before, really easy to do. I was able to come in here and adjust the debounce setting down to zero. And on this other screen is where you can actually adjust the pulling range and your DPI if you choose to do so. But these are kind of the options that I use when using the mouse. This seemed to work perfect for me and the 4K performance and everything for this was working for me spot on. And when it comes to the shape, if you've ever used the Sensei before, you have a pretty good understanding and idea of what to expect with this. It does have more of that rear hump style to it and the feeling of this mouse in the hands it actually does feel really wide especially here in the rear but the front it does feel a little bit more flat it doesn't have necessarily very aggressive curves from the mid out to the front they do just slightly a little bit there as you can see so let's go ahead and throw it up next to the sensei so you can look at them side by side to one another coming over here on the bottom profile one clear difference here aside from the skates as you can see that the sensor was much lower over here on the sensei so i really do like how they actually moved it up a little bit more forward on this even though it is kind of wide in the back and kind of harder to move up towards the front of the mouse with your grip i do still kind of like the forward placement a little bit more and to be completely honest with you guys there isn't a whole lot of differences between these two i do not believe that these are exactly a one-to-one 100 -one, identical clone even though they are incredibly similar to one another and i could be wrong but to me when i was going back and forth and holding these in the hand for whatever reason i don't know what it is but on the wise owl it just feels a little bit more wide to me in the back than the sensei 10 does but i do want to let you know that these differences are talking about are minor and honestly i could just be losing my mind a little bit here but looking at these from the rear i'm not sure if it seems to be to me if you can really tell come through on the camera i do kind of feel like it curves in just a little bit more right here and i do feel like it's a little bit more pointy and pronounced over here i'm not exactly sure what it is or if i can exactly put my hands on it but that is just one minor thing that I seem to notice but it could just be due to the fact that I do have smaller hands and this is a pretty large profile mouse to me overall and here's a shot of them at the sides as you can see they look incredibly similar to one another And to give you kind of a better understanding on the overall scale of this, let's go ahead and throw it up against the Logitech G Pro Super Lite 2. If you were to come over here to the bottom, you can see that the OGM cloud, it does have a much wider and aggressive flare out towards the rear. But when it comes to the overall width in the front of these mice, they're not really that far apart from each other. Just with that back profile there, it does make it feel much larger. But when looking at them from the rear is where you can see that this rear profile over here on the OGM cloud is where it definitely makes the mouse fill up your hands a lot more and definitely feel much wider. And then finally coming to the sides where you can see that the Logitech G Pro Super Lite just has a much softer curve profile from front to back to where this has a much more aggressive fall off towards the front and the rear. Finally, one of the things that the overall just shape of this kind of reminded me of was the OG Lamzu Atlantis. So let's go ahead and compare them. Starting over here on the bottom profile of these two, as you can see, the Lamzu Atlantis does have more aggressive curves towards the middle to where you get a little bit less aggressive curves and does feel a little flatter on the wise owl from the middle to the front. And the Atlantis also has more aggressive curves from the bottom 
to the top of the mouse where it just kind of feels a bit flatter over here on the Wise Owl. But in the hands as you're holding these, even if I were to put these together, the Wise Owl definitely does feel wider at the front and in the middle portion as well. I have seen people mention before that the Lambs Atlantis does feel a bit wide at the top for them. And I must say that in the hands that this OGM Cloud, it does feel much wider at the top of the hands. So when you're holding them, just all around, I feel like the Lambsu Atlantis just feels a little bit smaller. And then finally, when looking at both these from the sides, you can tell they don't look that far apart from each other. I really feel like Wise Owl did a really good job with the overall design of this, minus the little bit of the lip up here in the front, but it felt really great. The only issue for me personally is that I feel like the mouse just felt a little too wide and I was kind of struggling to kind of move up on it with my grip to kind of get more up towards that mid sensor. So for me personally, since my hands are just a little bit tinier, I'm not sure exactly if this is gonna be the perfect mouse for me, but again, I really do enjoy it. And I think that they've done a great job, which is the overall feeling. But I really love what Wise Owl is doing here. And if this is the size of a mouse, it's something that you're looking for, especially with the shape, then I could definitely say that I would recommend checking it out. All right guys, so if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you're looking at picking this up and supporting the channel, I will leave affiliate links for you down in the description below. If you've enjoyed watching this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.